I love the water. It was a place where you can think, you could rationalize. Uh, you, at times, I felt like I could study anything I want. And it was just you, you get into that zone where you just nothing, nothing can stop you. You're just unbelievable. You could just go forever and ever in that water and never stop. You just get that sense of feeling that you're you're comfortable. Where nothing can hurt you. Nothing can um, break it. Nothing can. You, you just want to enjoy the water. Just wanna, you want to be in that water constantly. Almost six years ago, in 2005, I was playing soccer and a kid came up behind me and he did a sly tackle from behind. And next thing I knew, I tripped and fell. And now I have a uh, sprained foot. And next thing I know, I went to the doctors and he's like, I was really sick. And he's like, oh, well, the flu's going around. And, He's just like, you'll be fine, and then it wasn't fine. And two, two, not one. The next day, it was uh, just terrifying. It was. I woke up at like two in the morning, screaming. Uh, just the worst pain you could imagine, and multiply it by ten. It was just, it was terrible. I felt. I I I don't know how to describe how I felt. It's just felt so traumatic to me, it was so different, and being a nine-year-old, it's just kind of, well, what do you tell a nine-year-old? I mean, do you tell them it's going to be okay? Do you tell them it's going to be, you know, bad? I mean, do you, you always want to give them some hope. You always want to give them hope, and next thing I know, I was in the hospital, and all these tubes hooked up to me, and all these people scrambling around, and yelling, and arguing, and I was in and out, and um, Sean, I've actually known Sean for many years, um, and he's, you know, a great inspiration to our team. Um, he came in, and he's got such a great attitude. He fits in as, as one of our swimmers. Um, the kids cheer for him. The kids are willing to help him in any way that they can. Um, but I think all around, his personality um, outshines everything in him. He's got such a great attitude and a great personality. And then while I was at the hospital, they did all this stuff to try and save my hands and my feet. And I developed septic shock, which is blood poisoning. And we don't know what caused it. It was freak accident. It was, I guess it was just fate. It was by chance it happened and we don't know what caused it. And everybody wonders why. And it's just sometimes it's better not knowing. Um, but I woke up and I was in the hospital and I looked down and I saw, you know, I was bandaged up and all this other stuff and you really didn't see anything. You didn't see anything bad. I mean, y'all were, you were covered in the white uh, wraps that they had and you didn't really see anything. But you felt kind of like almost paralyzed. You, you didn't move. You didn't do much. I mean, you moved your head and maybe said a few words, but you really, you really couldn't do, I really couldn't do too much. And I will, people, speech therapists would come in and all this stuff. And I was, from sitting in a bed, you, you lose your uh, muscle memory. So we had to learn some of that back. Was, first thing they said was, you're, you're going to do this. You're going to get better. My good friend, uh, she was my nurse. Her name's Carla, uh, Carla Carls. And she said, it's, you can do everything you can do before, just differently. And... I live by that. I mean, never say you can't, because differently you can. It's just something that it's kind of my motto. It's you always stand by not what you can't do, but what you can do. When I started fourth grade, um, my coach, Coach Beck, she uh, she was the swim coach here at at that time, and I had was still in my wheelchair, a little banged up, but I was still trying to get the hang of things, and. She was just like my mom. She nagged me. She yelled at me. She did everything constantly. And she was worried when our fourth grade went for their swim test. Because they do it every so many years. And it's just, she was so worried that I couldn't do it. So she had me come in during the summer. And I swam with the, uh, the high school kids. Um, a hundred percent he motivates the team. The kids see him, um, you know, with 
with all what he can do. Um, he starts in the water, which is something that we've worked on this year, um, and he tries very hard. I mean, they see, you know, minus, you know, what he doesn't have, how, how well he can do, you know, and, and it's, it's a really neat, really neat to have him part of the team and seeing the kids, you know, kind of stand behind him and push him forward. That was my big thing. I really don't, I want to be treated like everybody else. I don't want to be any different. And the thing that always got me was, well, I got sixth place and everybody's like, well, it's all about your time and all about this. And it's like, I'm a very competitive person. I'm not that person who's going for your best time. I'm that person who's going for first place because that's what they're going to remember. And it, it really stuns me when I get last. I do completely terrible and then everybody stands up and claps for me. I'm the type of person that when people tell you you can't do something, you go out and you prove them wrong. And then it, now I'm at the point where people know I can do stuff and they know I can accomplish things. And it's just kind of like, well, come on, you can do it, do this. And they want to, they, they've gone back to trying to cuddle me. And it's just, that's not something you want to do. And it's like, when I'm in the water, that stuff goes away. It's me by myself. There's no one there that's telling me I can or can't do this. And it's the one place where I can be myself and nobody can tell me otherwise.